Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India Welcome to the last session of ArcGIS in this series of lectures on spatial statistics and spatial econometrics. Uh, in this session, uh, we are going to uh, uh, look at raster data, uh, how to visualize such raster data, how to look at its property, what to be careful about, what can we do to manipulate these data. And then, you know, finally our quest of taking this stuff to an Excel sheet to a statistical software and, you know, maybe on R and, 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 and analyzing this data from there. After this session, you will, uh, you know, go into learning, uh, you know, hands-on exercises on R. Uh, so it's kind of a natural progression. Uh, different sophisticated techniques like, you know, building a variogram model, estimating a variogram model, you know, um, spatial regressions, they will all be taught on R because there are very nice routines, packages uh, which can be used. ArcGIS on the other hand is a very nice visualizer, manipulator, data management tool, right? All of those things can be done here as well, by the way. You could estimate a variogram model in ArcGIS, but you know, R happens to be much more powerful, natural, uh, you know, uh, software where you can do many other things. Um, so what we are really doing here is we are trying to learn how to visualize, really get a hands-on feeling of these data to sort of, you know, zoom in and look at what's happening and do some cross-validation uh, and things like that on ArcGIS, while mostly analysis. So data management manipulation maybe happens here. You want to create pictures, visual maps for your uh, you know, uh, um, uh, for your uh, uh, research, for your papers, articles, uh, you could do it all on here. But when it comes to analysis, perhaps it's best to take the data to a statistical software. So that's the journey that we are completing here, right? So in that spirit, let's go on to look at the raster data. So an example of raster data, as we have looked in your classroom, is the Bhuvan ISRO data. So how do we get there? If we simply uh, Google Bhuvan land use, land cover data, something that's out there. So you know, the first thing that comes out is these data, are these data. So we have seen these data, like you know, you have, you can select whatever theme you want, and then you know, there are these statistics you can look at. There's an entire 15 to 20 minute module in your lecture series uh, dedicated to these, uh, to the Bhuvan portal. But ultimately you want to get these data, you can download these data, you know, there is a form you have to fill and all that, so you know, um, like here, you know, I'm just showing one type of land use product, you know, under web services, you can figure out how to sort of take these data to your, bring these data to your computer. Um, I've done that for you here, but you will have to then, you know, download these data to be able to work with them, right? Okay, so, uh, okay, so say we have downloaded this data for a area of interest of our choice, right? So. I'm going to show you such a data set which I acquired from ISRO. Uh, so in my folder, again, you know, these data are to be found here. So I have LULC, land use, land cover, 250K, that's the map, uh, you know, uh, uh, you know, scale, 2005-6, and then it's a TIF file. So instead of shape, now I have TIF files. I also have such a data for 1415, 2014 2014-15, and I have some other files, right? So I'm going to drag this to my map and see if I get something. It seems like it doesn't get tracked. Oh, well, it does. Fantastic. It got tracked. Okay. So here now I have this data for a separately requested from the Bhuvan portal and acquired from there, uh, which doesn't exactly look like the UP data. You know, it is a data set that is 
you know looks like more like indogangetic planes this is the gangetic planes here is the here is the river uh, you know uh, and 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 this is these are the gangetic planes right so first thing that i could do is i would say okay i am only interested in analyzing up data so i'm going to now clip the data according to that so i'm going to go to my geo processing and i'm going to say clip raster i've just you know uh, 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 I've just opened it for your, so I've just searched clip raster. It says it's there in data management tools. I'm going to say open input raster. My There is only one raster on the window on the left, right? By the way, one thing that we should always do is we should always look at the properties of our data. So the data are, uh, you know, I should look at the spatial extent, uh, spatial reference. Well, it is WGS 1984. That's fantastic. So I can actually overlay the vector files on it and the locations I see are a good representation of where certain types of land use types are. The data can also be seen here. I mean, this is in the in the physical folder, right? Uh, in the in the other folder, you only see one file LULC, uh, you know, uh, uh, 0506 TIFF. You only see this file and you see this file. Just like shape files, these data also come as packets. So they'll have projections, they'll have like, you know, attributes. So they are, they are not just a single file, they are multiple files. So if you want to copy paste these data, move these paid data around, it is not a good idea to do them from physical folders. Rather, we should go, go back to our catalog and we should say, I want to copy these data and I want to take it to a different, you know, location, let's say, here and I'm going to say I want to paste these data. Okay, sorry about that. So I have, I want to copy these data. I want to go to this folder. Let's say I go to folder right here, India admin data and I say I want to paste these data. So that's done. So I have this data now in India admin as well. Let me go to the physical folder and figure out whether that happened. So I'm going to say India admin data and I'm going to look for, here we go. So LULC 250K, I hope you can see, LULC 250K has total, I think, uh, one, two, three, four, five, six files that came with it. They all move together when I move them as a single file from our catalog. Right. So again, that's the best practice and you should always follow this. And OK, so I have been able to open these data. But what are these different colors? Right. So I can uh, on these data, if you see, I have an arrow which I click and I have different colors that represent different classes. Right. I have class zero, which is a black color, class one, which is a red color. If I pay attention, here is the NCR region, seems like one represents urban or built up areas. Then there is two, three, four, five, six, all the way to 18, 19 till all the way down. There is a singular color and I don't see those things. So I guess there are no classes here. How do I know what these classes are? Well, when I download these data, I request these data from ISRO. They also provide me with a lot of metadata, right? As part of those metadata are these, first of all, there is this readme file. The readme file has the license. How do you cite these data? What, what are the purposes you can use these data for? And so on and so forth, right? Okay, so that's one. Second is the LULC classes. Well, one is built up, that's what we guessed. Two is Kharif crop, three is Rabi crop, Zayed crop, and five is double and triple crop. Okay, so let's pay attention to the first five. So built up Kharif, Rabi, Zayed and Tuple Tipple. Okay, so let me go back. The first is called, okay, can I rename this class? Okay, let's see if I can rename one, two, okay, let's see. Mm, display, source, metadata, general, no, I thought I could just, uh, anyway, so I know that one is built up, I can write on a piece of paper, if I'm not able to 
edit here i think one can edit these things so you should look up on your at your own time how to edit these classes so one should be called as built up two is khari which is yellow where do i see this yellow on my map well i see a lot of it here right where's this place well let's look at the districts and let's see what this district is okay i'm going to open the districts file i'm going to label the districts and i know that bijnor bijnor has a lot of kharif cropping going on okay a lot of kharif cropping going on in bijnor just trying to uh, you know bring these things up here okay a lot of kharif cropping going on in bijnor rabi that is the winter cropping non 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 monsoon uh, sown around late november early december and then harvested around march early march mid march right that's rabi right so now a lot of rabi south of the river right so here is ganges south of the river you have lot of rabi going on right look at jalaun jhansi hamirpur a lot of rabi cropping in 2005 6 zaid is the summer crop right it happens in the months of april may june right uh, so that's that's it so march april may june where is zaid let's try to find out can i find one single pixel of zaid uh uh uh, uh. okay um all right uh, not quite right i mean not there is not much of a zaid going on oh, well there is some here it seems no no that's not zaid so we need a brown color uh if i have zaid it's going to be brown color so we could probably look at the east oh there we go yeah there is some zaid in in bihar it seems right this is all uh this is all so look at the water bodies nearby so you know where the summer crop is getting its sustenance right okay that's how we do visual analysis uh then 5 is double and triple so this is this green there's a there's quite a bit of this green by the way like i mean so there are this double triple cropping means they are the land is being cropped three times in a year at least twice or three times all three seasons are cropped that's interesting right uh, uh so there are a lot of double triple cropping in the in in the, in uttar pradesh which makes sense i mean it, these are good soils uh, very rich in natural resources and so on and so forth okay so i have these data and here are the colors uh, you know uh, this is also downloaded from bhuvan i've taken this from bhuvan so uh, you know and 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 you can tell you know what is what here okay okay so you can compare this file with this file here and you can name your classes okay now i want to work with only up data so i'm going to clip the raster i'm going to go back to my geo processing i'm going to clip raster okay and so find clip raster okay input raster is only one output extent i want to work with up data so i'm going to say up state from uh the diva gis it automatically fills the extent and it says clip so i'm going to now take my raster data uh to the raster data folder i'm going to say lulc 0506 and i'm going to say put up clip clip okay and i'm going to make it a tif file i could also use dot img by the way img is a, as good a you know extension for the raster data okay save and no data is zero so no data means zero right so i'm going to say that's okay maintain clipping extent well uh, that's interesting what does it really mean well it really means is that if it is checked the number of columns and rows will be adjusted on the pixel that will be resampled exactly to match the clipping extent what does that mean okay let's first see what it means okay um if you go to the boundary of uttar pradesh if you go to the boundary of uttar pradesh right uh, i'm just going to go to symbology and make it a, a slightly thinner boundary okay what happens is that at the boundary here you see uh, you know uh, different uh, pixels right and and if i pay attention uh, to a particular pixel the boundary is crossing through the pixel and the question that this checking and unchecking is about is that whether i want to count the pixel inside the boundary 
right? That is overlapping slightly outside the boundary or should I be strict and say, no, if you are anyway, anywhere outside the boundary, I am not going to include it in my clip. So I'm going to leave it unchecked. I'm going to be a bit liberal about it. I'm going to be okay, that's fine, you know, just because the pixel is always a square and the administrative boundary is crossing through some of these pixels, you know, I don't want to throw them out. I want to take them in. Okay, that's a decision as part of my, an analyst. You may decide to throw, me out, throw them out, you should try anyway. Okay, so I'm going to say run. It's going to run it 100% done, right? It says building pyramids, clip, clip raster is completed, perfect. Okay, so if I uncheck, I am going to have a clipped raster. Oh, okay, so the clipping now has happened according to the rectangular extent. Okay, it didn't exactly happen according to the state. Okay, let me now redo this with the maintain clipping extent, uh, you know, uh, command and say clipped to and we'll say run. Okay, it's running, it's working right here. Very good, okay, it's done. Okay, still I have the same thing, but now the pixels that are going to be counted are going to be a bit, uh, you know, uh, different. Okay, um, all right, so, uh, so I have now a smaller set of data right, which is not as large, which is approximately according to the boundary of the UP file, right. Next step that I might want to do, just like for groundwater data and railroads data, is that I might want to, you know, figure out the land use profile inside the districts. Okay, so let me just change the color of this thing because, uh, you know, uh, it's harder to view that color now. Okay, so I might want to know which district has what percentage of which data type, which land use type. Okay, for that, we have this tool in, under geoprocessing, we have this tool called uh, tabulate data, tabulate area, sorry, tabulate area. So the tool it says is not licensed. So we have to, uh, you know, license the tool. Okay, so uh, let's, figure out a way to do that, okay. So now that we have our, uh, you know, clipped uh, file for Uttar Pradesh, it's a separate file that we have created. Uh, what we can do is we can now navigate through different districts by name, which I know by name, for example, Hardoi, you know, I can visualize the land use makeup in Hardoi in 2005 and six, right? I can see which districts have large, uh, you know, urban bodies, uh, you know, which have a higher proportion of agricultural land versus built up land and so on and so forth, right? Uh, if you go in, you will find these small speckles of red. Uh, a question arises, and what are these, right? I mean, are these, are these really built ups or are these errors? Well, for that one could actually, you know, uh, let's say which, uh, which district are we in? We are in Hardoi. So let's actually go and open, uh, you know, uh, Google Maps. Uh, and uh, maps.google.com. Okay, I'm going to open Google Maps. Uh, okay, I'm going to now look at the satellite layer and I'm going to say Hardoi, show me Hardoi. Okay, all right, now let's look at the district of Hardoi. Okay, so if we go on to you know, if we, if we zoom out a little bit, this is a satellite pictures and you can see these little speckles of white in green, right? These little speckles of white. What these speckles are, are small townships or villages which have built up areas, right? So this sort of also gives you an, uh, you know, a sense of population pressure. So, you know, if you zoom in to any speckle, what you're going to see is a built up area. Right, so there's a little, 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 you know, built up areas with different names, you know, there are these settlements inside, you know, the rural areas, these may be different villages, uh, town centers and so on and so forth, right? Bigger town centers will have, you know, bigger footprints. So if I go back to my, my map, you know, that's what little speckles are showing me, 
right? The villages or town centers, we are looking at the locations at that fine detail as actual data. What I could also do is instead of districts, say if I had an interest in, uh, you know, the groundwater data and land use data. So I can go back to my symbology. I can go back to symbology and I could work with say something like proportional symbols and I you know I, I did this earlier I'll just want these from 1 to 40 okay 40 yes there we go fantastic and you know I have five classes now I could you know if I wanted I could actually just say I don't want any fill I won't want any fill okay no color uh, apply do I get it uh, no, I don't get it. So wait, so I am uh, getting no color, outline color, I want, let's say, blue, I will say apply. Uh, no, so apply. Okay, yeah, so I want an outline color, but I do not want a, uh, you know, uh, apply. Okay, I want no color. Apply. Done. Okay, fantastic. Now, the bigger the circles we saw earlier is the depletion is a, uh, you know, a characteristics of a depletion problem. Now, the bigger colors are near this green, right, or they are near the urban built up. Smaller colors, let's figure out where the smaller circles, sorry, smaller circles are in oranges. What are the oranges? Well, they are uh, you know, let's go back and look at the data. Okay, uh, I know this is built up Kharif and Rabi. So Rabi lands have proportionately lower amount of depletion than when lands are double or triple crop. This is a very interesting thing that I've learned from the data, right? So you can sort of, you know, by simple visualization, you can start to make these uh, you know, connections between land use types and groundwater extraction or groundwater depletion, right? And, uh, okay, so, so of course, the next step would be to formally connect them and, you know, run regressions based on groundwater levels and, you know, how are they dependent on land use types and so on and so forth, okay? So for that, we will, as I said, that type of analysis is more convenient in a statistical software like R. R is also really powerful because it's, uh, you know, because of its open source nature. So anybody can download it, it's free of cost, unlike ArcGIS. So we will cover those types of analyses in R, okay? So uh, with that, we are about done with, uh, you know, our, uh, you know, our session on ArcGIS. Again, we have learned how to open, how to set up the software, how to open vector data, raster data, manipulate them, clip them, uh, you know, how to sort of, uh, you know, walk between an Excel file and a, uh, you know, a, 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 a uh, uh, you know, vector file of attribute table. So we've learned quite a bit tools. I hope they'll be helpful uh, for you. Uh, but it, you know, I want to end by saying that this is just a ramp up. There's an entire toolbox in front of you, right? We saw under geoprocessing, uh, there's, there's all these tools and they can do all, they can all do very interesting things. So it depends, you know, how far you go in terms of experimenting and spending time. I highly encourage you that you do that. Okay. So uh, thank you very much for your attention. Uh, we are done with ArcGIS hands-on, uh, you know, sessions. Uh, and next up are sessions on hands-on exercises with R. Okay. Okay. Thank you.